Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. Today's video is a very quick one because I do have sore throat and I thought I'll do a quick video since I haven't been doing many videos lately. Hopefully I'll recover quite soon and uh, produce new videos. But in the meantime, this quick video is about your home recording studio. If you are using your studio to record people other than yourself. Though my home recording studio was actually planned and designed for my personal use so I can create my own music and um, enjoyment of creating music and playing music without disturbing my family or the neighbors. But of course, friends, family and people in the neighborhood who know about my studio Want, want to record as well are also invited in. So if you have a similar situation, here is something you might want to think about before you actually start inviting people in to record their music. The first thing to do, of course, is when they come in, invite them, have a quick chat, find out about their project, what their idea is, what they want to do and how to record, what the arrangement is like. Have a feel for it if it's something it's your requirement because if they do require things that you don't have and you don't own and you need to actually go and purchase it, that is something to think about because you should start taking on projects that you can cater for. So you have the gear, um, you have the equipment and the software to be able to do that. So don't go out buying audio interfaces, mixers, and plugins, if that's what required. Let's say you have an audio interface which has maybe two or four inputs. It's good enough and plenty for your own personal needs, but uh, a client comes in and they want to record drums or another instrument that requires more than four inputs. Don't just go out and buy the audio interface. The first thing you need to do is get them to sign a musical recording contract agreement. This way, once you have the agreement signed, that means they have agreed for them to pay you. And that's what the agreement will be like. So my agreement is about two and a half pages long, which outlines all of the basic agreement. And then once they have signed, and in my agreement, it says they have to pay 50% deposit upfront before any recording starts. If they're happy to do that, that means you've got now the money to purchase the equipment that you need to do it. Again, think about it. You may be able to get away with what you have and find out other ways to um, record the project without spending any money. But if you must, make sure they sign the agreement, the contract, before you go ahead and spend the money. That's the first thing. The second thing that you really need to consider is by looking at the project and how many uh, members there are that are recording and how long the project is, how complex it is. You need to work out how long it's gonna take you to record, then edit, mix, and possibly, if required, master it as well. So once you work that out, and that usually comes from experience by your own, by recording your own music, you should have some idea how long it takes to um, arrange, record, mix, and master a song. So take that into consideration and work out how long it's going to take. And then write that in your contract agreement before signing in. So to say this project will take this long or this many hours uh, preparation, arrangement, recording, editing, mixing, and so on. And once you've got all of that, you should include in your contract saying that if the project goes over time, that means the time spent included in your project that you estimated takes longer than was written, then they need to really pay for that as well. So that needs to be part of your contract as well. And to make sure that those times are calculated, you need this paper. It's recording session sign-in and sign-out form. 
so that every time, as soon as they walk in, they put the time, they sign in, and when they finish for the day, they put the time and sign out and put any notes that is required. This is for their recording session. It is important so that you can keep track, not only for yourself, also for the client to find out how many hours they have actually spent recording in your home studio. That will go against and count against the contract they have signed. Because if your client is taking too long to record, they're not experienced enough, they haven't practiced enough, and they're spending a lot of time doing takes over and over again, that means your estimation is now miscalculated because obviously you wouldn't know how good they are unless you do. So those sort of things need to be taken in consideration as well. So to wrap it up, basically, make sure when you are accepting clients in your home studio, you have a contract for them to sign with all of the terms and conditions outlined. Make sure you include the hours in the price that you are giving for them to come in and record. Not to forget arrangements, meetings, trials, um, as well as mixing time for them to come in and verify mixes and so on. So include all of that in your contract and then keep track of the times when they come in and out using the timesheet. Well, that's it for this video. Very soon, um, as you can see behind me, I'm going to be evaluating and testing Magic's Asset Pro version 8 which um, Magic International has kindly sponsored and given me a free license to evaluate it. I will be doing that as soon as my um, voice gets a bit better so that my <laughs> videos sound, you know, reasonably clean and understood by many. So I hope um, you subscribe if you haven't, so that way you can see um, what my review is going to be on Magic's Acid Pro 8. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.